Madeline Scott, and I represent the Columbus Artists Guild in Columbus, Georgia. And this is our first in a series of videos of artists in this region and around town and our own members. First, I want to welcome you to Steve Boykin's studio in Hamilton, Georgia, and we're going to talk to him and let him explain what he does. I'm Steve Boykin. Uh, this is my studio uh, on Wednesdays and Thursdays. We meet as a group of friends who enjoy painting together. We enjoy each other's company. Uh, we're here to enjoy painting. On Mondays and Tuesdays, I have I do give some private lessons. Uh, the studio is relatively small. That works fine for me. I'm not looking for a big studio or anything. I really like the intimacy of, uh, of a small studio. This is our second room here. The, this is the room where we can do all the prep work for the canvases. Uh, we can get things set up. As you can look, as you see around, uh, you can hang your paintings up to let them dry until you're ready to work on them sec another time. Uh, so it's all the supplies and everything else that's needed. Uh, I do have limited supplies that I keep in here just strictly for, I'm not making money off of them, I just keep them in here give me my money back on type of thing. Uh, we meet here first thing in the morning. Uh, we generally meet at 9 o'clock. And like any civilized people and all, we start out drinking coffee and shoot the breeze about the daily uh, events going on. We generally do that till about 10 o'clock that we get up and go to work. This is Carol Ranieri, renowned artist in Columbus, Georgia. And she does a number of mediums. And right now, she's painting some things in oils. So, Carol, take it away. Uh, this is basically finished, but this I put um, a heavy coat of acrylic uh, texture on the back of it. And then I painted on top of it. And, um, Turn it this way so we can see it. Yeah. It's just a simple flower, but still, it, it's hard sometimes to get the paint to adhere to the... Um, the glossiness of the acrylic finish underneath it. And, um, and so you keep this picture above your easel, so tell, tell us about that. Steve has that on all the easels. I, I mostly paint faces when I'm here. And um, this is just to give you an idea of how your face looks, really, in 3D, instead of being flat how you can make the curves and the lines. So how long have you been painting? I've been painting consistently probably for the last three years, four years at the most. Other than that, in between, I paint maybe just here and there. I just didn't have the opportunity to paint before. Now I do. It's, I, I've got nothing but time, so I'm doing what I like to do now. Um, Mayo will have been painting seven years. I uh, contend that if I can do it, you can do it. Anybody can do it. If, if, if I can pick it up, you can pick it up. I like to paint trains and landscapes. That's what I painted when I was learning how to paint. But, um, you know, I try to incorporate trains in them as much as I can. And this is your palette? This is my palette. If you put it in the freezer, it, it keeps week to week, so you don't have to remake a palette every, every, every week. Um, so do you ever get this scraped all the way back down to the glass? Well, no, this is, a, I put a wood board in here because it seems to keep better in a freezer on wood than it does on the glass. And, and so, then you throw the wood away if you ever want to start over? Um, well, no, I made some more, so, <laughs> but no, this is, this is, to me, is almost art. It's be very pretty, very, you know, yeah, just the is. kind of the patterns and the, it certainly is. it has its own, its own intrinsic so, value. Shane, do you sell your art? Um, I would love to. That's a difficult thing to do because who do you sell it to? What is what is your your entree into that kind of world of, of, of how do you get your clients together? But yes, I would love to. Well, tell me about your project that you've done recent days on the Confederate and the Union Army and the, the whole 
idea of... Well, up until now, it's been painting other people's photos or, or trying to reproduce a piece of art to try to get a lesson out of it. And so what I'd like to do is either take my own photographs or <laughs> I would like to, um, to develop my own themes and sketch them out and then kind of develop into a painting, kind of a, a more classical path to a, to a work of art. You know, instead of, I don't want to reproduce pictures anymore, I want to create art. I consider myself to be a painter until I become the person that creates it. I'm not an artist. Well, I've seen your version of, of uh, Scarlett O'Hara mm -hmm. and General Lee mm -hmm. and some others. To, who, who are some other people you've painted? Um, I've painted a lot of the generals, particularly southern generals. There is one Yankee that kind of crept in there, but <laughs> you have your clutch my pearls. So yeah. But um, he had really good hair, and so the lesson is how to paint his hair. But it also reinforces uniforms and it enforces lights and you know the, the, the shadowing and now how many layers of paint do you have on this painting so far? Uh, um, up to four, but that would be in this area, but this has only got like two. I and see. so it's kind of you know I, I paint forward and so I paint the, the, the furthest thing first and as you come forward you paint it and finish it off. And so while this bridge is tucked behind these trees, while I'm doing trees, I might as well do the bushes in the front. So I've got to sneak it in there to make it look, you know, as it met, that it meshes, but. And you paint lots of little leaves on there, don't you? I paint the impression of lots of little leaves. How do you do that? Um, you have to know, you know how to load the brush. You don't, if it's too, too loaded, it's, it's a blob. If it's not loaded enough, you're working with to no end. You know, you, 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 you paint, 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 and there's no difference on your canvas. What's the point of, of all that effort if you're not making a difference? So this is a great big painting, and you have such tiny brushes. How does that work? I'm painting little blocks. And so, therefore, it, to me, it requires a smaller brush. I, I could probably go in there and block in a lot of it with a bigger brush, but why lessen the paint of this? Yeah, <laughs> why, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's going to be a lovely painting. I've seen some of your trains before, and good luck on the sale of this picture. Well, thank you. And there will be a train. Yes, and th but that's going to be your last thing you put in? Probably. What bridge is this? Is this I've, I've got the name somewhere. I think it's a, a bridge in um, Wales. Oh. It's pretty, pretty famous for its time. It's 1830, so it's a really early viaduct type, type of thing for a railroad. So. I see. So that's what you're painting up there? Yes, this is from The Walking Dead. I see. Your favorite show? Yes, I'm a horrible fan. Like, I'm such a groupie. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I've done him. I've done uh, Game of Thrones, the Queen of Dragons. Uh -huh. I've done her. I've done... I, there's certain faces that speak to me. Do you sell your art? No. No? You have a lot of it at home? Really no, these take me forever because oh. I'm slow. Because well, I talk the whole time and I just do a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to have a lovely painting there. When you Thank finish. you. We're trying to you paint with oils. Everybody here paints with oils. Yes, and I was an acrylic girl. I did like YouTube videos that would like step, step, step you through like, what do you call it? Um, beginner stuff mm -hmm. and I did that for the longest time and I just had so much fun with it and Uncle Steve was like that's very beginner-ish you know if you want to get serious you could really do this and that and I'm like nah we're just doing this for fun and then I saw one of his classes one of the girls came in and did something and it looked real and I was like I don't want to do that <laughs> <laughs> so it was just like on a whim I just wanted to try just for fun and then it just went. Now I come every it went week. Viral, didn't it? <laughs> right. Okay, In my so brain. What what medium do you use with your oil paint? Medium. Oh, I don't. Not often. Every once in a while, we we'll use this little bit of. Uncle oh, Steve, what is this? It's uh, linseed oil and uh, mineral yeah. spirits. Yeah. So you usually okay. just don't use a medium. Mm -mm. No, because it waters it down too much. It does, and then you do what I do. 
to get my fingers in it. Oh, I mean, all the time. We have to wear yucky clothes, otherwise we're in big trouble. Yes, yes. We learn the hard way. I run a home business, so I'm constantly, my brain's going. And here you can kind of like turn it off. Yeah. To where you're not thinking about. You don't have to pay your taxes. Right. You know, <laughs> there, insurance and Or taxes. dealing with customers I, or whatever, you know. Your I'd brain rather can just, just fall over than talk about taxes and insurance. It's just not interesting at all. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah. But, and this is kind of not thinking like that, you yeah. know. If you ever went to kindergarten, that's all you had to do. <laughs> And so when you're creating colors and shapes, it gives you a feeling of, maybe a false feeling of, this is like being in kindergarten, and it's relaxing and fun, and no stress. I'm not saying no pressure. But it is stressful. <laughs> At times. Right, right. Yeah, I right. get this right. Because you're like, this looks like a cartoon, and you want it to look real, you know? Yeah. That part gets frustrating sometimes, but... Uh, it's all a challenge, but uh, when you finish and you see something that you like, it's it's very gratifying. However, on my art, I rarely like it. I'm thinking this is terrible. Nobody's gonna like it. This, why did I do that? So you're very critical of your own art. Oh, it's one of those things that you know. There's there's a multiple layer layering that goes on in a painting. And for me, most of the time when I first get that, that first coat of paint on there, I'm going, I think we just set this over in a corner and let this die of old age. You know, you it's just one. really easy to abandon a painting. Do you painting. have one with just the first layer or first couple of layers? Yeah, some in there. Uh, the first goal on a painting is to just establish your values. If you get your values right first time around, the rest of the painting just falls into place. A lot of times you have to tweak them. You start out and you put you put your darks in first and you think it's dark enough until you get all the rest of the paint on there and you go, ah, well, it's not dark enough. It yeah. needs to be darker. Well, that's what comes with the second coating is tweaking mm -hmm. that. And you're going to keep tweaking it coat after coat after coat after coat until you get it to where you want it to be. Now, this is the first coat here. Everything on here, there's nothing... That's been done twice on this right here. So mm -hmm. this is now I have been I've been doing this now for a while. I've kind of closed the gap. It used to be five or six coats on a on a portrait, and with it being less and less work as you go along, you know your your fifth or your sixth coat is a lot of glazing and just tweaking little bitty things. But I've been doing it long enough now to where I make a I get more than just first paint, you know, paint on the canvas kind of a thing, I, I can push it a little bit and move it a little closer to being finished. So now I'm usually about at the three coat mm -hmm. limit, you know, but I don't see it going any lower than that right there simply because your first coat you're putting what you, you think it should be on there and then you, of course, when you get through getting paint on the canvas, you have to go put it up. Painting on it and trying to fix things, it turns to mud. Then you have to let it dry. Then you get to start all over again give it on some, the thing. Uh, pack up time. Yes, yes. You have got to do that. If you don't do that, then you're gonna you're gonna end up redoing it anyway. Uh -huh. So your best bet is to you put the coat on there. You go okay. Next time I need to do this and this and this and this. Fine and dandy. But put it up and leave it alone. Don't try to do that now. This is uh, two coats here on her. I, I worked on her some yesterday, so she's still, you know, she's still a little on the wet side. So I'll just keep tweaking on that. Now, being that there's a little more accessories and stuff like that, it's not just paint a face. You know, I'll, I'll work on certain sections at a time and not necessarily get everything done at once. Because of these rings and all, I had to let everything dry on there. Otherwise, I got my hand in wet paint all the time. Mm -hmm. And then you get to go in there and correct all that and straighten all that back out again, too. Yeah. Uh, this is just a beginning. I started this yesterday. So what I've got here is just a single coat. It goes in the progression of how you paint a portrait. You paint your background in. You 
paint the hair in, you paint the clothing in, the last thing you do is flesh. Technically, I should have finished her dress here uh, before I started on the face, but I had time and I can't help myself. You know, so I have to go in there and start. So, but I'm going, I got, I can put my hand on the canvas without getting into the stuff around her. So that's why I went ahead and did the eyes and the lips and stuff like that just to get a single coat on there. Well, everybody kept saying that, you know, well, if you're a portrait painter, you have to do a self portrait. And I kept hearing that over and over and over again. So I forget how long ago that's been. That might be four or five years ago. Uh, I went ahead and did a self-portrait. A friend of mine was a photographer. And while I was sitting painting on a painting, she took a photograph of me. And we ended up using that as our reference for, uh, for painting a uh, self-portrait. Now, I've had people who go, well, can you get rid of all these wrinkles? Well, no, it wouldn't be you if I got rid of all these wrinkles. Yeah. Hand me a younger picture of you, I can paint that. Right. But if you want me to paint you at your current age, I can take out some of them. I can be kind as I can be, you know, but they're part of your face. They're part of your personality well, now. Of course. You know, so they tell part of the story. Well, this has been very interesting, and I know that there are members of the Artist Guild who paint with oils all the time, and any tips are good for anybody at any time. Yeah. We can all learn something and improve on what we're doing. And uh, it's been quite an interesting endeavor to be here in Steve Boykin's studio. And I hope you will enjoy watching this. And there are more things to come in February on the fourth Thursday. Thanks.